Here's an example. Previously, I have walked five meters on a tropical island, got jumped by crustaceans. <laughs> a true Elden Ring experience back in 2001. Hey hey people, Jack here. So after reading some comments that insinuated that I, not watching the uh, Wizardry 8 review from Seth was something akin to a criminal offense, you can bet your ass that I was going to do anything to escape from uh, YouTube jail. So that is why I'm going to be watching that video today. Now I have never played a Wizardry game. I know that it is something that is very comparable to Might and Magic in like its RPG functions but it's a more focused on combat and I'm saying that because I know that the company that acquired Wizardry or its, its IP continued making games that um, more or less fired a japanizing beam on them and it turned very much into a JRPG but with the same controls. From gameplays that I've seen in other recent games they look fun but I am more interested in what is extreme role-playing is all about especially when there are familiar faces being depicted here like i recognize the guys but ken ashcorp is, is, is that ken ashcorp Huh? Anyways, let's jump into the video. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Today, I'll be breaking away from tradition. I'll be covering some old-ass game that's probably very obscure, long, frustrating, dehumanizing, but also very fun. Ask How is that breaking away from tradition? That's the usual. Yourself. Have you ever wanted to experience the role-playing equivalent of poisoning yourself? <gasps> repeatedly. I am afflicted. For many weeks. Wait. I got dibs on his stuff! Until you gradually build up a tolerance for self-inflicted pain and suffering. You see, much like eating a bag of raw potatoes, do it in one go and you might die, but do it gradually and you might live. Keep at it and you might just build start enjoying it. I present to you <laughs> Wizardry 8. Ro Hold on, this man went ahead and animated all of those faces. Damn, son! That is dedication to a bit. Released in 2001 by the Canadian government, Wizardry 8 is one of the finest torture devices to be released on the personal computer. Wizardry 8 takes place in the Dragon Ball Z extended universe. <laughs> you and your party are space traveling aliens hired by the Wookiees to retrieve all three remaining Dragon Balls, the Astral Domine, the Chaos Malari, and the Destiny Dominus, and use them to ascend as literal gods and reshape the oh. universe. Ascension takes place on a planet called Dominus. Fine Unfortunately, case. the process of ascension has been complicated by the involvement of a dark savant, who, to put it simply, is Space Hitler. Set. Mysterio? I mean, I can't be the only one who's seeing Mysterio while looking at the dude. Setting up an interplanetary, anti-Semitic blockade around Dominus. Unfortunately, your ship bears the mark of David <laughs> and is quickly <laughs> shot out of the sky, forcing you to make a crash landing. Come All on. things considered, that's not too bad. Except, Space Hitler has also rigged the planet with a nuclear payload that is large enough to glass the entire surface. In case anyone who isn't Space Hitler tries to ascend, I hope you're following all this, because this is just the intro. And now I'm gonna quickly summarize the plot to help you understand how amazing this game is. Space Hitler is not very popular. As a result, nah. he loses the only Dragon Ball he has to the Italian Mafia, because he neglected to pay their godfather, Don Barlone. By no the way, way, the Italian Mafia in this game is composed of rats and speak in an Italian-American accent. Me? I'm always in top form, not just Ratkin. Razooka, pal! Yeah. The Order of Tar, you might consider us a family of sorts. Don Barlone switches out the Astral Domine with a shiny salt lick. The Melanated Master finds out and has an autistic tantrum in front of you. You'll come to find this is a common theme. You take the imitation and buy the real thing. It costs most of your life savings, so instead of paying, you might try and whack him instead. Luckily, the best tricks are so nice that they work twice. First, you gotta get chummy with the Umpani or the Trang. This is the choice between authoritarian rhinos or literal bug men that reproduce faster than India. I usually roll Umpani because we share a common bond in our attraction to anthropomorphic rhino girls. Siding with one of those lets you visit the local Wookiee embassy to have a look at their Chaos Malari. And right. by having a look at their Chaos Malari, he seems like an honest, trusting guy. And those are my favorite kinds of people. I mean, snatching it in front of them, apologizing sincerely, and then replacing it with a knockoff 
soft glass bulb. Then you gotta find the Destiny Dominus, which is really the search for enlightenment. As the source of all knowledge in the universe, you find it naturally by consuming a lot of psilobison, DMT, and ayahuasca. So you can project yourself to a higher plane of consciousness and talk with Joe Rogan. <laughs> with all three Dragon Balls in your Dragon Sack, there's That's still great. a small matter of nuclear oblivion. So you gotta go up north and offer your sweet body to a goat demoness. This game was very progressive for its time because okay. Alcidexus is fiercely heterosexual and rejects the very concept of scissoring. She also rejects the concept of monetizable content because her milk jugs are anything but modest. Anyway, to disarm the bomb, you have to get inside it. How? By breaking and entering into people's bedrooms because, logically speaking, one of them is bound to have a direct access interdimensional portal into the bomb, but which of can be disabled by pressing random keys and getting lucky. With a bomb no longer armed, you smack the savant, leaving him disarmed. The savant dies, but in his death reveals to you the ultimate truth that he's been using a voice changer on Discord oh. this whole time. And he's not actually that dark. The okay. end. Any questions? No? Then in that case, welcome to Wizardry 8. I well, I guess that the acquisition and further transformation of the game into something that is more JRPG-ish What's the right thing? Because uh, the plot here sounds very anime-like. I love this game. Now let's talk about playing it. To play, you need to make a party. From characters, you make yourself. If I said there's a lot of options, that would be an understatement. You can be anything you want to be. Humans, non-humans, subhumans, furries, scalies, more furries, and even short kings. There's so many short kings in this game, you can pick by your preferred size. <laughs> anything from 5 foot 11 kings to a a five foot ten pocket prince who are so light at this point they get carried away by the wind. Race. Is there a link between race and I? There's 11 races and that's only including ones you can pick. There's about 16 in total. Do anything you want to do and I mean it. I don't care how many classes your game has because Wizardry 8 has 15 including but not limited to fighters which fight Valkyries which fight using female privilege to avoid death. Ninjas which fight with the empty space representing their lack of contribution to the team until two weeks into the average game. However, if you rolled a fairy ninja, congratulations, because your pocket prince can now solo the entire game. <laughs> Alchemist makes potions and breaks the economy by making infinite potions. You can sell for infinite money, letting you buy everything in the entire game. Nice. 10 out of 10, working as intended. Gadgeteer, who uses an unconventional form of weaponry a gun. But that's the boring part. The interesting part is overloading a microwave in a monastery, ripping out the microwave chip, and using it to give your enemies brain tumors. Gadgets are essentially random pieces of trash duct taped together to inexplicably cause widespread devastation. Nice. And if you think that sounds ridiculous, then let me tell you about the bard. In most games, a bard plays music, oh, keeps up morale, no. and probably cooks and cleans for the party as well. Oh man, that's the greatest. I recently pulled myself together and decided to go and watch the latest D&D &D movie. And it was surprisingly good, but I was reminded of the meme of when the bard finally joins the fight. That's great. <clears throat> well, in Wizardry 8, the droning melody of a bard's bagpipe brings pandemonium, the plucking of his harp causes cerebral hemorrhaging, and the blowing of his horn results in nuclear fallout. Building wow. the optimal six-man party is difficult. Explaining is difficult, and we don't have time. Here's my build. Follow it, copy it, enjoy it. It's very powerful, very well-rounded, and Crystal gives you a unicorns. complete first experience of a game. By the way, this game's got a lot of voice dialogue. I've got a surprise for you. Stand still so you can get it between the eyes. And most of it comes from your own party. I almost feel normal. There's 18 different personalities for each gender. There will be many implements of destruction at my disposal. Oh, that's yeah. great. Which is 36 fully voiced personalities in total. Yeah, slice him, dice him. No sense being nice to him. That's my motto. And that's absolutely nuts. You were aiming now, for the stars, the huh? fun stuff. I present to you all my current party. That's right. I manually imported all this to work inside the game. By the way, they're fully animated. The portraits, not even that bad. But manually animating the eyes and mouth? Yeah, that took a while. As our first <laughs> fighter, we got Internet Historian. Physically, he's a giant. Mentally, he's... Ah, a trap. 
I wonder what would happen if I just pull this thing here. Unstable. He's very stable. <laughs> Mr. Mandalore has our second fighter, whose voice I absolutely adore. How exciting. I think I'm improving. Oh no. More people. They just keep coming. And coming. Hello, door. I'm getting stressed. It's just so expressive. As our morally bankrupt, backstabbing, conniving, and scheming G We got my man Uber Danger as a rogue who sounds exactly as he does in real life. I'd rather be recognized <laughs> with cash, but a rise in status will <laughs> We're gonna change Uber Danger from Danish to Italian. Do? Oh yeah! This is amazing! Uh, nothing special. Um, yeah, probably worthless. <laughs> I'll just uh, hang on to it for us. Uh, you go on and fight. I'll guard the rear. For spellcasters, I put Frederick Knudsen as our resident psionic. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with him. He's actually the most well-adjusted of the entire group. Gotcha! I am glad to be alive again, <laughs> though the stillness of death was not totally objectionable. Also, I put him as female. Sorry, Fred <laughs> baby, but the best jewelry in this game is for girls, and we need to min-max myself <laughs> as the party's dark, brooding alchemist. Ordinary men fear the power of darkness. But of course. I revel in it. Who, over the course of the story, has been one-shot many times. The dead guy! What was his name? <laughs> Thanks so very much. Why did you tear me from death's sweet embrace? And finally, Ken Ashcorp as our local priest. Be careful! I can't believe we're wasting time talking to a chipmunk! Who's also completely unhinged. I did originally consider adding Pyro Cynical to the team, but unfortunately, YouTube yes. does not let me feature minors in this video. There's a lot to do in wizardry. Explore amazing <laughs> places, visit the swamp, catch malaria, climb a tree, get body blocked for hours by hamsters, go to the only functional city in the game, with a grand total population of about 12 people, get harassed by Space Hitler and the androids of the Fourth Reich. Head to the bar, get blackmailed, go to the bank, because of course it's still open. Go to the airport, because why not? Because this is the one game where you can talk to a starship and tell it to go fuck itself. So. The dialogue system in this game is nothing short of amazing. You have to manually write down, memorize, and figure out the keywords for conversational topics you're interested in. You the game will me? then try to identify your intent and produce you a fully voiced answer. Amusing yourself, are you? There's not many NPCs in this game, but I remember every single one of them. Whether it's the Umpani and their militaristic tendencies. Oh, come on, come on now, stupid thing. Get in there. Perfect. Oh, no. Oh, no. The slick-talking Don Barlone of the Razuka. Well, we keep our end of the deal, you know. But he slips town before he pays our fee. <laughs> so... We're here to collect, but uh, he ain't gonna pay. That ain't a problem. We get a cash, and you get your prize, and the dark savant gets shafted. Or even your own biological daughter, conceived as a result of sleeping around with demons, because their voice acting is absolutely fantastic. Some can even be convinced to join your party. Okay. Unfortunately, most of them are highly superstitious of their own planet, and won't go where you want them to. You know what, boys? This place reminds me of a song I wrote called I Ain't Going There No Way No How. The workaround to this is running them to exhaustion with a heavy backpack, knocking them unconscious, and forcibly dragging them past the load screen. Once they wake up, they'll complain and bitch about this breach of consent, which is why people generally avoid them. Except RFS81, who is the best boy, because unlike everyone else, he's not programmed to be a bitch. Quests <laughs> are also equally brilliant, until you get stuck until you get frustrated and desperate enough to read the damn walkthrough instead. There's no shame in that because I do it. And I finished the game twice. Some of my favorite quests include protecting a verified Twitter user from hateful comments online <laughs> by crushing someone into meat paste after luring them in using the sweet aroma of a female girl, getting motion sickness from the mine tunnels, and of course retrieving the black box flight recorder of a crashed ship so you can triangulate the position of space Hitler's ship and <laughs> use a heavy surface to air battery to shoot him out of the sky. Three, two, one, firing. I'll be damned. 
Yeah, this game goes 0 to 100 real, real fast. Quick. Anyway, let's get back to something sensible, like using medieval weaponry to kill fantasy creatures. The biggest part of this game, from beginning to end, from the moment you wake up on that beach to the moment you pass out combat. each day from exhaustion, is combat. This game has a lot of fighting. A lot of fighting. The hardest thing in this game is to simply walk unmolested <laughs> through a short forest trail, which is physically impossible, because every step of away, you'll be harassed, molested, and physically assaulted by the entire regional populace. Should you survive your first experience of the great outdoors, you'll reach Arnica, the first city in the game. And don't worry, that's where I also let my guard down. Sleeping with a door open, peeking out from a dusty window, only to catch a faint glimpse of moving oh, pixels no. in your peripheral vision? I'm very sorry, but you are now in combat with the entire city, because even civilization is an unstoppable barrage of random encounters. To understand my frustration, here's an example. Previously, I have walked five meters on a tropical island, got jumped by crustaceans. <laughs> a true Elden Ring experience back in 2001. Oh boy. <laughs> I gotta try this game. Walked five meters back because I realized I was going the wrong way. Got jumped by more crustaceans only to walk forward again and get jumped by the same group of crustaceans which have now respawned. This wouldn't be so bad if combat wasn't turn-based, but it is and it's slow. This won't hit you immediately, but believe me, it will. And once it does, the following information will make sense. Hello, future viewer. Like you, I have also had a mental breakdown after watching combat animations for many hours. So oh, I've installed so. the Wizardry 8 speed mod to quicken animations. I'm running Wiz8 fast at 625 times speed, and I'm simultaneously speed hacking the game with Cheat Engine at 3 times speed. Damn. And it's still slow, but don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean combat is easy. It's absolutely the opposite. It's sadistically hard. It doesn't care, and it's going to keep beating you until you break. She was a saint! A saint! Sure, you can put down the difficulty. You're still gonna get shredded by the 10 plus juggernauts that just came out of camouflage. <laughs> the only way to avoid dismemberment is to play intelligently. Uh -oh. This game is a constant battle of overwhelming odds versus your own capacity to game the system. To charge the juggernauts is suicide. They swing potentially three times a turn and they're not stupid. They're gonna surround you, flank you, and hack your spellcasters to pieces. Positioning is important. Instead of charging, we hurt them into a choke point. Their numbers become worthless, and we reduce the fight into a glorified meat grinder. Cool. And that's not hyperbole. Enemies get visibly wounded the more you hurt them. It provokes a very Pavlovian response, as I get satisfaction from seeing whatever has inconvenienced me get reduced to a bloody pulp. Other times, I'm left thinking, Jesus fucking Christ, please stop. stop. He's already Just dead. put him out of his misery. As I'm beating a bandit so hard that we've ripped the very skin off his face, and his skull is visibly poking through the flesh. Tactics are important. Your fighters do most of the damage. Your mages control the battlefield. Why deal with a crowd when you can make the crowd insane and kill each other in a psychotic rage? And if that doesn't work, paralyze them, curse them, give them topical dermatitis, make them throw up, and induce nausea. You know the best way to stop an animal attack? Diarrhea. <laughs> because it's very hard to focus on anything was going when to... your ass is exploding. However, any status that affects enemies can affect you as well. And you'll find it's very hard for your party to focus when they're in the process of getting bored and digested by wild animals. Something's different, but I can't put my finger on it. Yeah, perhaps mm. your lack of finger. Luckily, combat is extremely rewarding. You only have to win a couple of fights appropriate to your level to level up. With that comes increased stats, skills, and spells to expand your options. Also, the game gets harder. Early game might be spent on the verge of death, but given time, you'll find that this is a constant state of tension, except you're no longer afraid of it. Instead, you learn to enjoy it, and even revel in the act as you realize you're quite good at it. I do, however, have some crit Critique. One, traps. Traps are randomized, and one of them oh. stole 90% of my current assets. Philosopher's Bane turns your gold into lead, and I forgot to quick save. On the Ouch. other hand, my critique is also praise, because traps are a perfect example of how goddamn good the sound design is in this game. First, you gotta tumble around to try and guess the mechanism. Next, you need to try and disarm them one at a time. Listen to this. The sound is so goddamn crispy that you can 
physically feel the tension as your rogue fiddles with a machinery which can snap at any given moment. No! Good God, <laughs> I love it. Just uh, remember to save. Two, lock picking. Lock picking is not based. It is cringe. It is an endless hell of clicking tumblers to make uh. them rise, only to watch the rest fall as you persist in your futile struggle. Which is why I strongly recommend you use earth magic to magically hold the tumblers, because otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Three, pickpocketing. Don't even bother, because it's fucking broken. No one's really sure how it works, but you can't save scum, and the responses are hard-coded. It's actually almost creepy. I once pickpocketed an NPC five times with the same negative outcome, only to reload the quick save and discover that the NPC was missing, or rather, that they were deleted from my save what? file, as if to send me a message. I know this sounds like I'm losing it, and you don't have to believe me, because I managed to record the whole thing. Four, other weird shit that happens. I used to think you couldn't alt-tab out of this game, <laughs> because alt-tabbing breaks the keyboard. Turns out, it doesn't. You just have to hit the alt key once again. How could you know this? You can't. How did I learn this? I smashed my keyboard and it worked. Then, I reduced the surface area of my fist, smashed keys at random, until, through order of elimination, found the secret combination. This game has several features on the level of esoteric knowledge. That is to say, nobody knows shit. Wizardry 8 is absolutely fantastic. Yes, there's annoying bullshit to deal with, but hey, it's almost two decades old and released in less than ideal circumstances. That's mm. why there's still a fucking hardware advert that pops <laughs> up whenever you try and close the game. Because the publisher was broke and the developer tech. was about to be. So they had to shill out by advertising higher FPS in a turn-based RPG where FPS doesn't matter. On the other hand, holy shit, that advert aged well. They still exist to this very day. Pre-built computers? Now that's a future-proof business model. Not some turn-based PTSD simulator that blew its entire poly count on <laughs> jiggle physics. This game will try to break you. It'll spit oh in your boy. mouth, call you names, and crush your self-esteem. But if you persist, that's when real satisfaction kicks in. When you're no longer at the mercy of its bullshit, it's the feeling of control. And let me tell you, it is an all-encompassing, intoxicating sensation. Sounds I like give a BDSM Wizardry experience. an extremely high score. I also give it 80% off on GOG, because I have that power. All this for about two dollars. If it sounds like something you'd enjoy, give it a try. An average playthrough will run you anywhere between 100 to 150 hours of game time. And given the vast range of builds and character classes, it is very much replayable, preferably sure. with breaks of several years in between. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Wonderful. Have a good one, stay safe, and please enjoy the credits. He seems like a kind, generous soul. I hate him. What do you want? If it walks, I can change that. I'm burning <laughs> to kill. You gotta admire the guy. He didn't let a little thing like being dead slow him down one bit! <laughs> so now I'm a Templar Rapax. All my childhood dreams have come true. Oh, great swimming! I hate swimming! I didn't come a million miles to get all soggy! Holy shit, the uh, VA for the combinations that he chose for Internet Historian and Ken Ashcorps are amazing. I'm filled with glee. We won. I think we can make an all right universe if we put our minds to it. Chaos. Woohoo! <laughs> Death has taken him, lucky fellow. You know, they said I was crazy when I told them I'd take over the universe one day. <laughs> Ow. Master, it is my duty to report a life form disappearance. You know, that was the single most traumatic moment of my entire life. I'm not a man to hold resentments. I like to forgive. Maybe you could expedite that process a little by, uh, you know. A cash settlement? <gasps> His death comes as a surprise. <laughs> he showed so many traits of a strong alpha male. We got it! Now let's get out of here before bells and buzzers go off. I'd hate for this to turn into some kind of bloodbath. Yeah, <laughs> hate it. You know, when someone gets a big kill like that, his friends usually pitch in with some kind of reward. 
Really, they do. <laughs> Who shall be your sacrifice? Taken care of. Ah, beautiful choice. <laughs> I have been transfixed by the demoness and used for her sport. It's like a beautiful dream. Wait! Didn't I, see anything. I have a confession. You recall that Rapax Demonus that I, uh, well, we, uh, yeah. suffice it to say that she has bewitched me somehow. If I leave this place, I suffer the torments of the damned. The only way to stop it, oh, I am afflicted. The Demoness possesses me no longer. Why is it that all my affairs end in bloodshed? <laughs> you can't con a con, Savant. And you can't steal from a thief. But you can kill a killer. Especially if you're me. Good night. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I like how Seb got so absorbed into this that he put himself in the game twice. God damn. And also, the cast was very endearing. I somehow now desire to see like a sitcom of six of them just going at it. But guys, thank you for the recommendation. Please do go and subscribe to Seth and like the video if you liked it. That said, wish you all to have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one. Bye.